Hello, today let's talk about a pretty hot uh, recently released model, Shenling M0 Pro. And uh, it's already re really popular because its uh, predecessor M0 was also a huge seller. A few years ago when it was introduced it was uh, uh, like uh, almost impossible to imagine that you can put uh, more or less uh, decent sound to such a small and cute shell. But Shenling managed to do that and also they really successfully managed to improve uh, usability with uh, uh, coming firmware because the first uh, version of firmware was like uh, really really average but then they improved uh, many aspects and it became pretty conveniently usable. But still because of that size it came with a lot of shortcomings. And uh, here I think that actually naming it uh, Pro is not uh, the most uh, like uh, fitting uh, option because um, it's more likely M0 version 2 or like M0 2023 because there were no big changes in, uh, in shell, actually there were no changes in shell, processor, UI was a bit improved but still about the same and uh, as well as UX. Main changes are the sound, they replaced uh, uh, old 92-19 Sabre that was used in the previous version with two 92-19 chips uh, by the ESS like uh, uh, that uh, audio chipset but more modern version. And that allows them to achieve a better sound and pretty decent battery lifetime, so like uh, stated is 14.5 hours, I've got about 12 in my regular tests. Output power is uh, 265 milliwatts for 32 ohms load, but actually to achieve it you need to buy special adapter, because it came with, uh, with unusual 3.5 millimeter connector where you can put uh, uh, your regular single-ended headphones and in this case it will deliver 90 milliwatts for 32 ohms load to get uh, much more uh, powerful and potent 265 you will spend you will have to spend uh, some money on the extra adapter taking into account that it's actually not that cheap it costs 130 dollars of course for the player it's not really expensive but still uh, uh, it's noticeable some for such ergonomics for example uh, you have to pay like 15 dollars extra and in europe that uh, adapter costs like even more i, I saw some uh, uh, some shops selling it for 20 euros so basically consider this player as like uh, 150 dollars or so but of course it supports bluetooth both as connection and uh, transmitter and receiver no wi-fi support uh, but it won't uh, do much difference here because without android wi-fi is not that usable but of course it's convenient to update firmware over the, over the air but anyway let's have a closer look so package is small, pretty stylish, it's Ukrainian uh, officially imported version, so here is this localization sticker with uh, basic information. And inside of the box, we get, uh, inside of this outer sleeve, oh, sorry, we getting uh, like nice bright orange uh, cardboard box. And actually, life is short, play more, you know, nowadays I don't think that it's a good motto. Uh, so, here we get player itself. Is there something underneath? Yeah, so, some accessories and probably in that box some other accessories. So, let me try to shake it out because I need to return it. Uh, I could uh, buy it actually, it's not expensive, uh, but uh, I don't see much usage uh, in such player for me. Of course, in uh, typical audiophile scenarios, it can do a lot of things. It, you can use it as a nice dongle deck, or you can use it as a digital tonal converter with your laptop, for example. You can use it as Bluetooth uh, transmitter or even as a transport with some much more expensive digital to analog converter so in terms of versatility and the universal features it uh, really rocks so 
in the accessory set we're getting USB Type-C cable and uh, actually what accessories are here so by accessories they mean different uh, papers and manuals and the small screen protector so you know uh, package is good of course uh, accessory set is absolutely basic but I think that they should rise the price and include that balanced cable to the basic set of accessories. In terms of design it's uh, extremely cute, extremely small and actually extremely well built. Because this uh, tiny shell made of aluminium there are three different color options and as usual this uh, greenish one uh, is one of the best in Shenling's lineup. They have the similar color for their other devices. So it's uh, well machined aluminium and actually even by shape it reminds other Shenling devices. Also it reminds uh, old classical iPod Nano that everyone uh, recalls with a good sense of nostalgia. But at the same time it's uh, much more thicker because uh, Nano was uh, definitely uh, more compact and it's a bit bigger in frontal projection and also screen is not uh, as edge to edge as it was with Nano but anyway still really compact device that will uh, serve you great for example during some exercises jogging or something like that I've seen even projects with uh, uh, some headphones and glue it uh, on them, uh, glue it this, uh, and this player glue it on some headphones, and actually, uh, creator received like all in one device with Bluetooth receiver functionality and a lot of uh, good things. So, really versatile and small, long living, and that's all. So, feels, I don't know, I can say that it feels great in hands in terms of hold it and use but it's really uh, joyful to rotate it, uh, touch it and interact with it. And uh, there is not many controls, so on bottom we have uh, USB Type-C connector for charging, to access uh, SD card, to use it as transport or as digital tonal converter, also micro SD card slot and that sophisticated 3.5 mm connector where you can use regular jack or adapter. And here is a rotator with uh, clicks, uh, so you can change volume and single click is just uh, wakes the screen and uh, puts it to sleep. Actually, here is its screen, let me see, can we adjust brightness here? Yep, there is a brightness adjustment, so let, and even 100 steps, so here is here is the maximum level and here we came to that problem with usability because to go back we need swipe but uh, swiping uh, here changes the position of the slider. So here is main menu and uh, it consists of now playing. Here you can see open all favorites, albums, artist, composer and playlist. Actually it's the same as uh, here in my music. So we need to select some of the tracks. As you can see it's a list of all tracks. It can be scrolled. If you swipe, swipe left to right you go to the back screen. But after modern smartphones you need to, use, to get used to, the, to these swipes. You don't need to swipe from the sides of the screen. You need to swipe totally on the screen like in short uh, gesture and there will be no animation or something to confirm that uh, you uh, did it. So let's uh, select something, some track and here is now playing screen and uh, you can tap to see album cover or here is the track itself. Uh, buttons for navigation, slider, let's go back to now playing screen so, with some usage to swipes, you can swipe to next screen where you can add to favorites, change equalizer, get information, add it to playlist and change play order. And another screen, probably here we should see lyrics if they were pre present in tags, 
but it's just that optimistic uh, motto of Shenling. So these swipes require some usage, uh, but uh, actually after you used to it, it's pretty okay. So now playing, now goes to the now playing screen. Long tap on the screen moves you to main menu. In the music you have list of all tracks, uh, favorites, album, artist, uh, composer, playlist, genre, most frequently played, recently added, and recently played and recently added tracks. So you can go to this list, uh, you can browse by albums, by artists, but there is no uh, uh, album icons in this list, unfortunately. So folders, it's like navigate by folders, Tapping here can bring you menu with traditional functionality. One uh, another thing you need to use to it's actually scrolling. If you scroll slowly and hold your finger on the screen, it's uh, okay. But if you swipe even a little bit, it will scroll you really far away. So even tiny, tiny swipe moves you really far. And if you do full featured swap. Uh, swipe on the screen it will scroll you like through the half of the list but any moment you can actually tap and stop the scrolling but at the same time Shenling added uh, quick scrolling here by this uh, side so it helps you to navigate black list uh, selecting the first letter of alphabet so folders uh, all that list have menu with uh, adding to playlist deleting and so on here in the playback we can select maximum volume, we can set uh, default volume, uh, sh uh, should it sh sh show artist or album artist in the artist list, resume, should it remember position or not, gay plus playback, equalizer, you can enable it, if I remember right, it's like uh, 5 band, or even no, f not 5 band, 10 band, equalizer, with the uh, ability to have three custom presets and some predefined ones. Gain high and low for the single ended output, there is no sense in putting it too low. Replay gain useful feature when you have some compilation with different volume. You can select two linear filters, but actually difference is inaudible to me. Channel balance, play mode and skip to next folder during the playback and system settings update media library bluetooth if you activate bluetooth here it will also be visible as bluetooth receiver so you can connect uh, to this device and it will work as a receiver in uh, bluetooth it supports aptx uh, aac sbc and a bunch of ldc ldc codex and that's it no advanced aptx codex family also you can select uh, bluetooth headset volume control if you need it uh, and also search for devices to connect so it can work as a bluetooth transmitter sync link is a great feature you can connect it via bluetooth to your android smartphone and use a dict player to control playback media library and other things on this player that doesn't work on the ios i'm not sure temporarily or forever but for now it doesn't work Screen brightness you already seen, uh, screen off, uh, timeout, idle, actually auto standby and auto shutdown. Must admit that it's uh, really uh, efficient in standby, so you can leave it for a long time, it won't uh, uh, drain battery fast. Sleep timer, USB mode, uh, adjust uh, clock, what should be on the lock screen, should it be shown or not. Uh, volume uh, should it be changeable on the locked screen wheel shortcuts uh, double, double click and triple click will allow you to play pause and, nav and navigate uh, dsd mode usb audio output uh, and actually in long menus you can swipe right, right to left if you uh, if you did the swipe correctly it will scroll the caption so it's phone out or line out in vehicle mode. You can select one of a few uh, co color themes to your liking. Basically just uh, different colors mainly. 
and here is once again hard to exit from this menu so let's go back to the system settings and also language about factory settings and system update so uh, menu is pretty packed with features but navigation by this menu requires a lot of usage and of course about the sound so speaking about uh, sound we need to keep in mind two uh, things first of all that it's a player and it's uh, affordable and small player because uh, like in, so uh, in terms of sound it's comparable with uh, some uh, uh, new uh, entry-level digital tonal converters by Shanling I'm speaking like uh, UA1S, their UA2 the, uh, and so on but, and uh, for the price of this device you can get a better digital tonal of converter but at the same time uh, you won't get all that functions of the player so taking that into account sound here is pretty good it's uh, still a Shanling signature with added weight on the mids and low frequencies and uh, pretty relaxed treble but at the same time they are not over soft and here like it was uh, in some past uh, tunings by Shanling so bass goes to the good depths, not maximum, but pretty good. In terms of control, resolution and uh, texturing, it's normal. Not great, but uh, pretty good for this uh, price tire. It has a bit of additional weight, so it's not the most uh, like focused on the small nuances type of bass, but it's really enjoyable, especially for the music that uh, requires some additional weight of, on the low frequencies. But even with natural instruments, it sounds uh, pretty realistic. Not maximum level of realism, but uh, pretty normal. And uh, first example for the low frequencies I've got, it's uh, Bielo Dugme, famous uh, band from Yugoslavia, and uh, track named Ove Ples Dame Biroju. I like uh, their uh, par few albums by Bielo Dugme very much and uh, I like this track in particular because it's uh, saturated, it's filled with that uh, cabaret-like atmosphere. It's basically bass, uh, acoustic double bass and uh, some shakers or maracas or something like that and vocal. And in the later part you, you'll also get uh, trumpet but uh, it's pretty minimalistic atmosphere that deepen you in some like smoky dark uh, basement up uh, uh, hall where people listen to music and uh, it tells a pretty interesting story but anyway for us it's important here is a double bass because it's really boldly recorded with good sense of strings and body so it's lacking a bit of definition in this player but in general sounds uh, full bodied and uh, pretty natural and builds good contrast with vocal too which is also really important Mids are like normal, they are good in terms of resolution, not focused on the micro contrast at all and that makes this player really forgiving for the quality of records but at the same time it's not like losing some details or nuances because in general with good material it plays uh, pretty in a pretty natural way. A, a bit of additional weight uh, makes uh, male vocal more full bodied and gives a bit of additional body to the instruments. And the female vocal sounds normal but uh, sometimes lacking a bit of spark in the upper mids area but that can be easily compensated with some headphones. Stage about is about average in width and in depth but actually it's one of the most noticeable step forwards to me compared to the previous version of uh, M0 because in the previous version it was uh, pretty flat at least to my ears as an example I will use actually track by uh, no not this one this one Bruce Dickinson a tyranny of souls one of the most impressive vocal pieces by famous vocalist and like you know when I first listened to this album actually it was my first acquaintance with uh, Bruce solo albums actually no it was second first one was uh, Scream for me Brazil 
live album that I liked really much and uh, this was the second one and this track uh, Tyranny of Souls that part it starts slowly with some interesting effects uh, but then starts vocal and when it comes to the chorus Bruce shows all his power and it was like stunning experience to me and it's all about mid frequencies and actually it sounds uh, pretty good of course not as great uh, as compared for example even with Shenlink M3 Ultra but uh, at the same time pretty good with all necessary power and uh, vocal attack and uh, treble is like it's good, it's not mm, like something superb, but extension is here, basic overtones are here, and uh, it's not uh, sharp, it's not highlighted, it's not getting additional energy to make everything more airy, but at the same time, if you treble sensitive, it's uh, good news to you. Don't expect here some layering or like uh, high overtone saturation, but basic overtones are here, attacks and decays are uh, adequate and uh, in general you're getting uh, that uh, uh, symbols and other dinging and uh, rattling instruments represented pretty nicely. And here will be our last example for today. It's uh, Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. It uh, starts with a pretty airy intro with uh, Sting vocals. I learned that recently that this line about uh, I want on MTV was uh, sung, sang by Sting and uh, he didn't ask for any royalties. He just wanted to do something for fun with his uh, mates from Dire Straits. But later uh, Sting's label decided to uh, that uh, they want royalties and Sting receives their part of the uh, money for this track for just one or two lines that he sang. But anyway, Airy with a lot of uh, different uh, uh, percussions and uh, all of that requires a nice uh, treble performance. Uh, so this player delivers it. Not greatly, but on pretty not good level. Speaking about uh, drivability, of course, uh, with single-ended model, it uh, it's okay for some pretty sensitive in-ear monitors, like for example, uh, Noble Audio Han. Of course, uh, they are not matching this player in terms of level, but in terms of sensitivity and power, they are okay. You, I can hear even a bit of uh, background noise with these earphones, while they are not super sensitive, but uh, that background noise is not really, uh, really high, and actually low gain here helps uh, to reduce it even a bit more. And uh, like, uh, if you need to drive something less efficient or some full-size headphones, you will definitely need balanced connection and that adapter. Speaking about the comparisons, actually there is not much players to compare. Uh, there is uh, uh, what we've got. Newly, there is newly announced uh, Hybe R2 second version, but I haven't tested it yet. I really hope we'll do it in some near future. Comparing to the previous M0 version here, you you get better staging, especially in depth and uh, also more slightly more developed treble that's the most noticeable things i uh, i've heard and uh, speaking about the comparisons with different digital tonal converters the, there are many of uh, dongle decks and this price tire basically it's simple you know it's shenling sound with a bit of additional worms and all other uh, portable digital tonal converters uh, not from shenling they are usually less weighty and more natural, sometimes more energetic, sometimes more focused on the micro contrast, but totally different. So this player is first of all really a great gift for those who like Shenlink sound, but also for those who need some compact uh, portable player uh, for like some active sport, for daily commute, uh, or to use like some accessory for the laptop or something like that. In this role it's like uh, absolutely stunning because it has a lot of great features uh, despite the fact that you'll need some usage to UX 
and it will deliver nice sound. Not of course uh, something gi some giant killer or some truly masterpiece, but really good uh, value for this price. So uh, if you're looking for something small, it's one of the most obvious options for you to consider. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention and of course have a great day.